background music. Uh, definitely check out Rayless uh, Cat Records. But let's talk. Let, okay, let, let let's talk Turkey Chat. Niji Sanji. Um, let's let's talk specifically just for now the audition for. Right. So like Rayless and myself, we know more firsthand than probably most people out there that the form <clears throat> the form itself has changed a lot over time like if you look at the form two years ago versus today it's usually it, it, it's changed let's let's be real it's changed uh, the reasons for said changes is because they had, they had slash ran into issues with either the audition process or previous talents, right? So we, we, we have seen the changes so far now. That is good. We want to see changes. We want to see improvements to the audition forms. I, I want to say Niji Sanji probably changes their audition form way more than an organization like Hololive. I think the problem is is and I better, like, the issue. I think their problem is, might be, the talent's previous life, lack of rules, lack of guidance, and this is, this is like all of us theorizing right now. We are 100% theorizing. We cannot say for sure. This is that. This is like, um, th this is the reason, right? Because we, we, we aren't part of the corp. We don't have the inside details. We really don't. Um, but one thing it does feel like is, and I don't know how true this is. I really don't. But what I truly feel would help new talents more than anything um, is if the new talents, instead of focusing on collaboration with their fellow gen members, um, focused more so collabing with older talent that has been around for a while for the first six months or so could be less could be more depending on how it is but like th think of it like the real world chat when when you guys are going to work or you're starting a new job more than likely, your your job isn't going to pair you up with the guy that just started there three months prior. Or they're not going to pair you up to learn things with somebody that has only been there, like, like since you got there an hour prior. Typically, they, they pair you up with somebody that's been there for a long time, knows the ropes, knows what the company expects, knows the company values, so on and so forth. Yeah, shadowing people. Yeah, 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 yeah. Exactly like that. Shadowing people to know the ins and outs, right? I think that's probably what happens. I do not doubt for a second they get training. That I know for a fact they do get training. But from the date that they accept the, um, after like, they get uh they get past the the audition from when they debut it's a very short window 
it is an extremely short window. So any training they do get is rapid fire and just thrown at them. And then they're expected to remember absolutely uh, uh, everything. So having somebody shadow or having the new talent shadow the old talent for an X period of time would be a better thing to do. Now, they do look up to the older talent, call them senpais, sensei, so on and so forth. I don't know if there's a lot of that happening in the background. Right? Publicly, we see it. But is it actually happening behind the screen, behind the curtain? I doubt it, considering the things that we've been seeing happen day in and day out. Don't they practice their audition streams? They might practice their audition streams, but that is the audition stream. That is a stream, right? So, no. And for the people that don't know, they like when 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 talents go live and so on and so forth. There it it isn't scripted. None of what they do is a script. A lot of it is like they might have like a guideline of what they want to get accomplished during the stream. They might have a list of hey, we want to achieve this, we want to do this, we want to do that. But it's not a script. A lot of a lot of live streaming you can't script. Videos, sure. Live streaming, that is extremely hard to do. So, unless it's a pre-recorded live stream or a pre-recorded video, uh, which for the most part, Niji Sanji doesn't do, except for like their debut videos and so on and so forth, all of it is just off the seam of their pants. I'm doing good, Sakura. How you doing? So, I think truly, truly, what would fix all these issues or what would fix the issues is quite simple, quite simple, right? Mentorship for X amount of time. And it like minimum, I would say three months for any new people. Hey, Annie. Um, then a review process and discussion. I'm assuming they're doing this, but I, I don't want to say for sure, but I'm going to assume they do this where they review the talent dis and have a discussion of what they can improve on and what to look out for. Right? Because, you know, and and I I know they're probably guilty of this. I, I know other agencies are definitely guilty of this. They hire the talent, right? And because the talent had like X amount of subs, following, and so on and so forth in their previous life, they expect to have the exact same skills, values, and so on and so forth 100% transferred over. And the thing is, and you guys can tell me if I'm wrong, this is how I think about it in my head. When it's something that you've built up, your brand, your image, you are a hell of a lot more careful with that than you would be if somebody gave you an audience, gave you viewers, gave you subscriptions, gave you a model, right? Because you're given something, you're a lot less cautious than if you worked and, and built it all up from, from the ground, which a lot of the previous talent did do, right? And that's why they were a lot more careful with their previous branding than they are with their current one, I think at least. So having this review process can really help narrow things out. And it gives management a chance to be like, hey, you know what? On this stream, on this day, you kind of went a little bit too far, bring it back a little bit, even if it's like once a week until, and I'm not saying they have to do this forever, but, Eventually, right? Uh, do you think Niji Sanji needs to create new content to compete with Hollow? Because what I see is kind of following the trend. Yes, exactly, Matthew. We're going to talk about that in two seconds. <laughs> we, we are going to talk about that. Uh, but yeah, what would fix this mentorship, review process? Um, and, and honestly, what probably could help as well 
it feels like all the ta- all the talents are competing with each other right and it feels like they compete for the same audience and and not not just competing with each other in the same generation in the same uh, 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 um, release, but like previous ones as well. Hey, Blue Bird Muffins, how you doing? Um, so I think that's the problem, right? Now, now, how to fix this is start expanding, expanding the brand beyond what it is now. Is Niji Sanji competing with Vishojo? No. I truly do not think Niji Sanji is competing with Vishojo. The reason I don't is because Vishojo is mostly Twitch. Niji Sanji is mostly YouTube. Niji Sanji is YouTube. Where Niji Sanji and Vishojo, the only place they would compete is on VODs or uh or, or um evergreen content. But the problem is the problem is Niji Sanji doesn't make any uh, evergreen content. And this is another thing that would fix the issue. Talent slash agency. I think this one should be more on the agency on than the talent. Agent. The, I think the agency should be responsible for this, not the talent. But making content from the live streams. And posting it on the channel. Right? A great example is if you guys look at Dr. Lupo, Dr. Disrespect. Wow, there's a lot of doctors. <laughs> but those those are fantastic examples of where they're going where like where they only stream on YouTube, right? But they edit up their content, their live streams. Oh yeah, Mista, sure. Yeah, Mista too. But they're editing up their live streams and making those into dedicated VODs. And there isn't a lot of people in Niji Sanji, if any, probably one or two, that that's doing that right now. And they're missing out on a massive market because they're this is this is this is this is one hundred percent of their problem. One hundred percent of their problem. Cold stop. Now I'm thinking about it. There's more th these days. That's good. Um, I'm gonna call this old old thinking. Right. And I'm, I'm so freaking guilty of this. So freaking guilty. So freaking gu guilty. So, okay. So, so Mista does it too. Okay. So you guys know the ones that do it. So that's good. Old thinking is I'm not going to edit anything. Right. I'm not going to edit anything. If people want to watch me and my content they will watch the whole VOD. And this is this is like the downfall for a lot of, of Twitch streamers too, because they have this exact same mentality. They really do. So, um, their YouTube channel, Niji Sanji Official, make shorts out of the streams of their livers. That is so useless. The shorts should be on the channel that the shorts come from, not on a completely different channel. Because the main Niji Sanji channel is going to have a whole bunch of different people. What if you have a favorite VTuber? Chat, we all have our favorite VTubers. Let's be honest. Let's be, uh, let, 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 let's be very honest. You don't like every single Niji Sanji member out there. I literally only watch one and one only, and it's a pretty easy guess for you guys to figure out which one. Right? 
Like, honestly. So why am I going to subscribe to a channel? Why am I going to watch shorts? Why am I going to scroll through the shorts of other people, of other livers, of other talent that I care nothing about? I literally don't care about 99% of their other talent. I care about the one other talent. That is literally it. Right? Some of you guys will watch two, three, or four. But you know what? If I'm already subscribed to Scarla, I want to see Scarla shorts from Scarla. Not Scarla shorts from a completely other channel. That has everybody else mixed into them. Uh-uh. That's not how that works. It really doesn't. Like, think of think of it like of of I'm trying to find an example for TV. Um Game of Thrones having Game of Thrones clips, not on their dedicated Game of Thrones YouTube channel, but on HBO's. Like HBO has a whole bunch of other stuff on there. Like, no. <laughs> so did VTuber Clippers stop existing? I hope VTuber Clippers never stop existing because they're the ones that literally, um, literally make uh, uh, VTubers successful. Let's be let, like, like very honest. There's a lot of successful VTubers that would not exist right now if it wasn't for the Clippers. There are Niji Sanji talents out there that wouldn't, I strongly feel, wouldn't be as successful if it wasn't people clipping. Clippers are uh, make the, the, the communities grow. But, okay, so anyway, old thinking. I'm not going to edit anything. If people want to watch me, they'll watch me and my content. They'll watch the whole VOD. And some of these streams are four hours long, right? I don't know about you guys. For example, I've, I've talked about Landmark so many times, and like so many times. Landmark is an escape from Tarkov streamer. I will never watch a landmark stream. I don't have the time or the patience or the brain cells to watch an entire landmark stream. What I will do is go to landmarks YouTube channel and I will watch the landmark highlight VOD of what he did on that particular stream, who he killed, how he killed them in escape from Tarkov. That's how I consume content. That's how a lot of people consume content. Right? That is why a lot of people say, make sure you put timestamps in your VODs, blah, 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 because people don't want to watch everything. They just want to go to the thing that they want to want to see. Right? So anyway, that's old thinking. New thinking, which I think all of them need to subscribe to, need to do. And if the talents don't have time to do this, right? The agency needs to step out and, or step up, not step out, step up and do this for the talent. Because you cannot tell me the agency does not have the funding to hire editors for these very busy talents. Because I know these talents are busy. I know they barely have time to edit or do anything else because they're doing 50 million other things. And it's not fair that for the talent to like have to find an editor or do the editing themselves. New thinking is have a dedicated editor. Sorry, chat. <laughs> You're going to hear me sniffle. I apologize. Have a dedicated editor, right? That edits for two or three other talents okay and and just hear me out on this one chat hear me out on this one that as for two or three other talents in niji right okay and that's all their job now why do we want to have an editor that edits for two or three other talents and not just for the one talent Like, like, like the one, like having one editor for one talent is, is an acceptable thing. It can happen. But why is it better to have the one editor try to do two or three people at once? And there are editors that do two or three people. Like, for example, the editor for Trash Taste, he does Trash Taste, Connors, uh, 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 Anime Man, and like, like four or five other people. 
not just experience. I gotta make sure I spell this word right. Ah, Truffle's got it. Truffle's exact. Yes, Truffle. Yes, consistent content slash feel. Right, right. You should have a consistent feeling from. You know what to expect. You know exactly what to expect. So if I watch Scarla and then I watch um 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 I don't know uh Mista, right? As long as their content is similar in 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 what they make and that that's the key, right? You don't want like somebody having a uh, uh, editing style as Mista and then trying to do it to somebody that doesn't do the remotely close same content so on and so forth, right? They got to have similar but honestly just yeah familiarity attracts people it feels familiar and then they could they could share some viewership as well but it also makes it easier for the editor it makes it easier for the talent so but yeah well, by the way the shorts posted on niji sanji felt they're edited by petra gurin she's literally the editor for all of them that's awesome that's good but I I strongly feel the shorts need to not be on Niji Sanji's officials channel. It really doesn't. It needs to be on the talents channel. It has to be on the talents channel. And if there are talents that are doing that and doing VODs like you guys have stated that they are doing, then really we're going to see if those particular talents get a lot more viewership and so on and so forth. But there's another thing that the talents need to do. And this is underneath the new thinking as well. Um, we see fan accounts do this. Uh, we see clippers do this. Please, please, please correct me if I'm wrong, chat. Because I, I can't literally follow everybody in Niji Sanji. So I'm really relying on you guys on this one. Posting content. So, aka our shorts. On other platforms. Other platforms. TikTok. Facebook. Insta. Etc. Whatever is out there. I think... For Niji Sanji to really grow, to really expand their audience, to stop sharing the same audience for the most part, they have to post everywhere else other than just YouTube. There's a couple in Ian that post shorts on TikTok. Okay. If there's a couple, they're probably getting more success and polling people. Because remember, chat, remember, just like, just like Twitch. Not everybody knows of Twitch. Not everybody likes to watch things on Twitch, right? There's been you guys in the past that literally have told me you'll never go to Twitch. You'll never go watch anything on Twitch, anything like that. But imagine, imagine, for example, if, if Coca-Cola only, only, only did advertising at baseball games. Would Coca-Cola be as large as they are today? Probably not. Imagine if the car dealer Ford only, only, only advertised their products at the Daytona 500. Like, they would not be where they are today if they only did that. It's crazy to do that. So posting content on other platforms to expand the name of your brand is very crucial. And not just posting shorts, but literally take out ads on Google. Google is like what? The number one platform out there? Yeah, Billy Billy too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, I've, I've recently heard of Billy Billy. 
And apparently that's growing quite a bit, but like take out ads on Google, host on Billy Billy, like literally like you got to get your stuff out there. Why, why is it that we see the idol corp, that agency post on, on there? I see literally advertisements on Google search results for idol corp. I see, or I've seen, I don't see them anymore, but idol corp advertisements when you type in VTuber into, into, into YouTube. Like your audience, your potential audience isn't always on the platform you're streaming. You have to pull them in. That's why the top 1% of, of Twitch has YouTube channels, right? The top 1% of Twitch for the very most part wouldn't be where they are today if they only make content on you or, or on, on Twitch. Like, honestly. And if you look at the top 1%, any of them chat, if you go to any of them, you're going to be pretty hard pressed to find any of them not having a YouTube channel not having a TikTok, not having a Twitter. So Niji Sanji really needs to really spread that stuff out there. Okay. So another thing that I think is happening right now, which is kind of similar to what we saw on the thumbnail of this particular live stream. I'm hoping you guys saw my current thumbnail. <laughs> and it didn't pull a thumbnail from the last stream, which YouTube sometimes likes to do. Um, I thought I'm, I'm going to use what's a word that's similar to that thing he was holding, but not that word. Okay, um, holding a banana. We're going to call it a banana. A ditto? Okay, yeah, we'll, we'll call it a ditto. We'll call it a ditto because it, yeah, it basically, it kind of, kind of like a Pokemon. Yeah, it's basically a Pokemon for, for some people. Um, but, so they're, they're, they're holding a ditto. And I'm thinking about it because like, just a week or two prior, somebody was let go from Niji Sanji because they stated so many uh, bad things, some horrible things. Uh, we got other people saying that they're not going to care about what their audience says, which I think is an absolutely good thing for, for them to do. Um, but the ditto thing caused a lot of controversy. There was a lot of people that were angry about it. There were some people that were okay with it. Some people mentioned that... Um, streams and the Twitter should be marked 18 plus, which let's be very honest here. If you mark anything 18 plus on YouTube, on Twitter or whatever, you're going to lose a massive following because of it. You're not going to get as many people showing up to your live streams because literally um, YouTube, TikTok, uh, uh, Twitter, all that stuff kind of throttles you a little bit if you if you have a dedicated 18 plus thing and you're kind of like marked as that right so um but but we've seen some some niji talents doing stuff that isn't very uh wholesome or pg which let's be very honest let's like like let, 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 let let's jump into our time machine All right, chat class. Let's 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 hop into our time machine for a minute. Okay, everybody, get on the bus with Miss Frizzle. We're going on a trip. Okay, we're gonna go back a couple of years. All right, now we're back a couple of years. All right, class, let's get off the bus now. Let's take a look at Niji Sanji from a couple of years ago. Yeah, back then Pluto was a planet. But what do we see for Niji Sanji? They were very much, very much, 
I'm going to put mostly, because they were, PG. Yeah, pre-Luxium. Yeah. Pre-Luxium for the most part. But they were very mostly, very much PC. They were also what? They were more wholesome than the newer gens. Right? And let's be very honest. A couple of years ago, let's be very honest, a lot less issues, right? Like, there wasn't any other issues on Twitter every other day. Well, for one, the company wasn't as large as they were, right? There's al that's always going to be a factor. Michelle, you're absolutely right. NSFW sells. It does. It does. It does. It does for sure. But there was a lot less issues. There was a lot less controversy. There was a lot less people being or, or graduating at the time. Right. But yeah, there was a lot less talent at the time too. But I really, really, really wondered to myself, and I, I was talking to, 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 to a friend about it too, uh, and I, I stated, why is the newer talent the way they are and seemingly wanting to speed run getting fired? I honestly thought that when I saw the, uh, the ditto. I'm like, wow, that manager must be freaking out right now, losing their mind, blah, 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 blah. Seeing some tweets from the, from the talent or recent tweets from the talent saying that they don't care about people, blah, 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 blah. And then I thought about it. I thought about it long and hard. No pun intended. No pun intended. They're not speed running, getting fired. That's not what they're doing at all. Actually, and this is one thing that I've noticed for a very long time. If you look at the majority of Niji Sanji, I'm not saying all of it. I'm seeing, I'm saying, uh, 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 yeah, I'm not saying all of it. I'm saying most of it. Most of Niji Sanji do similar things. They really do. Right? Uh, most of Niji Sanji play similar games, make similar content, unless you're Scarla or, or other people, right? For the most part, they're almost a copy pasta of each other. And like we were mentioning way up here on the whiteboard, uh, they're sharing an audience, right? They really are. They're, they're for the most part sharing the vast majority of the audience. So the reason why we're seeing dittos and more lewd and more other things is to really pull a new audience because let's be let's let's be real here chat if you were say so right there's a lot of people that aren't say so probably wouldn't watch you because say so uh uh, uh viewers attract a certain type of viewers NSFW streamers attract a very particular set of viewers. So not doing say so streams pulls in a completely different viewer base. Because let, 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 let's be very honest here, right? Let's let's super honest. If you grab the most wholesome, I I, I don't want to keep saying wholesome because wholesome means different to everybody. If you got the more, the most safer work VTuber out there 
And then on the opposite end of the spectrum, you have the most nudity, not safe for work uh, VTuber out there, right? So they're both VTubers. That's the only thing they have in common. They're both 2D, right? They're both uh, and whatever gender, right? You got one that's very, very, very uh, uh, well-dressed, professional. I don't, know, I don't even want to say professional. Mostly covered. And then you got the other one that's really not covered that very much and very plays into the sexual aspect of, of, of uh, anatomy and so on and so forth. The very conservative uh, 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 VTuber, their viewers isn't really going to go all the way over to the very lewd VTuber. And the very lewd audience, that is what they subscribe to. That's what they look for. They're not going to go to the very covered VTuber. They're not. Right? They're not. And we see that in society all the time. We see that in media. We see that in movies. We see that entirely so this is why we're seeing the dittos this is why we're seeing uh especially on their twitters where they're going um for the really boyfriend experience um and that's what they're doing that's why they're doing it it's pulling in a new audience and an audience they don't have to share for the most part, with the rest of Niji, right? So anybody that's ever done my um, um, VTuber audition uh, uh, form reviews, some of you guys, I, I drill in, I drill into you guys again, no pun intended, of what makes you special. Honestly. What are you going to do to pull in a new audience for Niji Sanji? You guys that have done that app, that, that audition uh, thing on Patreon, right? Where I review your guys' application forms. I literally tell you, I, I literally ask you guys that. Because Niji Sanji needs that. That's what they're doing. But isn't that new audience potentially considered problematic due to the type of content being put out? Very good question, King. Very good question. Yes and no. Let's be honest. Let's be very honest. There is a yes and a no, but there's a yes and, the, and a no to the non, or for, for, for the safe of work people too. Now, for the non as or for for the not safe for work, they will have issues with people um, crossing the line, right? Shipping, because let's be honest, the community loves to ship uh, 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 VTubers in, in an agency together. Oh my god, it's like the new, it's like sliced bread. They love it. Um, stalking isn't just for, for, uh, not safe for work. I, I, I had a stalker as a VTuber, right? I've talked about it on streams in the past as well, right? I've had my, my stalker. They're going to, and, and even if you are a safe for work stalker, you're going to have those too, right? So it's not just for not safe for work. It, it's going to be, it's going to be, it's going to be there, right? Um, so you're, you're going to have stuff. You're going to have people doing that kind of thing. Safe for work. Right. And this is from what I personally seen chat. Please again, correct me if I'm like completely wrong. Because I love to admit what I'm wrong. Um, but they also have people crossing the line. And they also have people shipping. All the time. When Niji was say so, they didn't have as much drama as they do nowadays. I agree with you. I do. I I I hundred percent agree with you. If there are VTubers, uh, because what I'm about to say, 
might trigger some people. If there's people in the audience right now, if you happen to be, be a VTuber that only lives on Twitter and you don't make any content anywhere else and you're not a huge fan of me uh, because of things I've said in the past, please just, just do me a favor. Turn off the stream for like five minutes. <laughs> Uh, if, if, if you don't mind, um, yeah, so the thing is, Niji for sure didn't have that kind of drama before, right? But Niji did grow quite a bit. Their audience has grown a bit. The main problem and the main issue of Niji getting in trouble are people that mostly exist on Twitter that mostly have no, uh, nothing else to do, nothing else to accomplish are wannabe VTubers. Again, this is from my personal experience from what I've seen on Twitter. And haven't made any kind of content of their own in their life. The fans that I have seen, when I go through, when I have gone through, the negatives and the positive treats and it's mostly the negatives really mostly live in the quote retweets they really do the vast majority of them live in the quote retweets when there's a vtuber not doing something wrong they go to the quote retweets they don't really go to the comments so you, you can really like filter them out the people in the comments are usually okay they usually don't care the people on the quote retweets are usually V tweeters or V tubers that stream once or twice every month and then have a problem because it causes them PTSD of some kind. Uh, I will disagree because my slight deep dive I've been doing with Niji does show a lot of more of the drama in the JP side. It just exists purely on the JP site. So it looks more clean. Yeah, that too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm mostly talking about North America because I, I, I'll, I'll be honest with you, Quite Cat. I know almost nothing about the JP side just because I don't read Japanese and I don't care to do any kind of translating or watching other people's opinions of what somebody said in a completely different language that they barely know what they said. Um, but honestly, that's, that's what it is, right? There is, there is a lot of, a lot of people that go on hate trains for the dumbest things, right? There's also a lot of people that go on hate trains for minor misunderstandings. We see it on Twitter all the time. And that's where we see a lot of the negative feedback and, and, and then in the backlash is on Twitter, right? Let's say, let's say the ditto thing blew up and it was a huge negative thing, but let's be honest, we would probably see that in their YouTube comments as well. And when I search that person's YouTube comments, um, after the stream and so on and so forth, I really didn't see anything bad. I didn't see people trying to cancel them. I didn't see anybody really mention anything negative. There is the person in there here and there that does that. And I, I really, I really, 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 really encourage all of you guys to go check too. Next time a Niji Sanji member gets into any kind of drama, check out their comment section of their, of their live streams. You see, there's a lot of people on the comment section on their YouTube live streams that don't care. But you see a lot of people on Twitter in the quote retweets caring. Probably a reason for that. Uh, yeah, yeah, it's a, it's a ditto of, of, of a kind. Look up Hex Sakura. Okay, let's look up Hex Sakura. The deal thing barely registered with me. I thought it was just funny, to be honest. Yeah, you, okay. So that that's the thing though, right? You thought it was funny. I thought it was funny. But there were people that had legitimate problems with having mental breakdowns over it. It wasn't even real. It's a picture. But they were having flashbacks like it was Vietnam or something. 
Sakura. Oh my god, my nose. Sorry. I apologize. My head is not here. I saw that I smiled and moved on. Yeah, exactly. Um, what did they do to get canceled? Three D debut, fans, relationships, trivia, external links. What do they do to get canceled? Chat, help me out here. Somebody write it. Oh my god. Okay, I'm drinking a little bit of water. I apologize. My coworker got me sick. <laughs> that's the only. That's the only way I got sick. You have no clue. Okay. The thing about some people will find a certain joke offensive, even if the streamer didn't mean it to be offensive. It just comes down to it's. It's the thing is, it's not even jokes. That's the problem. C plus hero. It's not even just jokes. Statements. So chat the other day. We're not going to go into a deep discussion about it. The other day I made a tweet. Um, and, and we talked about it on stream. The tweet I made. Uh, what did I say? What did I say? I said, what did I say here? Remember. Okay, so this is the tweet I made. Remember, any tweet you make is a reflection of yourself and your brand. If you want to really grow and foster a quote unquote wholesome, right? Wholesome community, then you shouldn't be tweeting negative content. That was a fairly base tweet. Wasn't very controversial. Golly gee willikers, the people in the quote retweets. They had a breakdown thinking about it, talking about it. It wasn't a hot take. It wasn't, it wasn't, wasn't anything bad. But God, the quote retweets me literally, literally, literally calling me a fraud, calling me fake, telling me, I don't know what I'm talking about saying that I'm a horrible representation of the VTubing community. I haven't helped a single person. That was just me. <laughs> I'm nobody. I'm pretty much a small VTuber for the most part. I really am. Right? Yeah, and the dude I try to disprove, well, which I did disprove and then had another mental breakdown afterwards that too. But like literally... <laughs> Saying that to me of all people, that like I'm I'm trying to steal people's money and da, 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 da. it's like holy crap. But like honestly. Um <laughs> same similar things happen to Niji Sanji members as well. Where they could have a very base tweet that's not sexual, that no, that's not triggering, that's not blah 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 to the vast majority of the world, 99% of the world. Uh and just takes out of context and gets steamrolled. Even if they're proven wrong, they're going to stand there and say they're right. <laughs> so, yeah. But is there is there an aspect of Niji Sanji that goes into the not safe for work that can cause more problems than not? Yes, absolutely. There is also things in the safer work. We just may not have seen it yet of where it could be a very negative thing as well. Right. Does, uh, uh, as does, uh, uh, not safer work sell for the most part. It does. Yes. But, um, and, and this is, this is the problem. And this is, this is what I'm hoping, uh, the people that do this in EG Sanji don't run into. But this is a problem that the vast majority of small VTubers run into when they do not safe for work content is they make the not safe for work their entire brand, right? This is, this is the risky thing 
for not safe for work people uh, or for Niji Sanji members to do, right? They make it. They 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 make it their entire thing. They really do, right? They leave. They they live. They breathe literally everything not safe for work, right? The problem is. And we see this all the time in the VTubing agency, right? Someone always, and, 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 and Qui-Gon Jinn said this better than anybody. There, there's always a bigger fish, right? But somebody always outludes you, goes further than you are willing to go. Always, always, always. That always happens. Always will happen. Will happen. Unless, unless you don't make not safe for work your entire brand. Okay? Don't make it 100%. Make it 80%. And the other 20% of your brand... is something else that brings in new people and makes people come back. That is the caveat. That's what they have to do. And there are, uh, for example, there, there is a lot of, of lewd, uh, uh, live streamers, flesh and blood, flesh tubers that exist on Twitch, right? Twitch is going to be an amazing example for this one, right? Which Twitch had a, a minor problem of, of lewd streamers, right? That really skirted the rules and lines and so on and so forth. A lot of those lewd streamers that were in the just chatting section and so on and so forth, right? Now they're in hot tubs and pools and so on and so forth. But a lot of those people aren't around anymore. Right? The top ones, the top ones, the tippity top, the ones that were the absolute success, right? The very tippity top, they're still around, of course. They're doing their, their loot things still, right? But I personally saw not saying I've watched a lot of that. Maybe I'm saying a little bit too much now. I did see though, I'm not gonna say how I saw these, uh, but I did see a shift in content that the lewd streamers made into other content. Right? And the ones that made the shift, yeah, research purposes, of course. But the ones that made the shift are still around with a decent audience size. And I, I encourage all of you guys to literally like look into this yourself. Um, and 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 you'll see I'm right. But yeah, these, these lewd streamers that couldn't be at the very tippity top, they knew they couldn't beat the people at the very tippity top, ran a, uh, uh, stayed in that category as long as they could. They saw that there was an end coming for them, uh, made a gradual shift into other things, and now they stream different games, they make IRL content that isn't lewd, so on and so forth. And they they were able to stay in the game. Something similar will have to happen to the people in Niji Sanji that are, are solely focused on not safe for work right now. They're eventually going to have to make that shift into other areas of, of content creation. And by not safe for work chat, I mean like, again, 100% of their brand is not safe for work. That is their main focus. I'm not talking about people like Scarla, right? Scarla has a little bit of loot things on the line of lewd things here and there, right? Scarla makes so much great content 
that has nothing to do with not uh, not safe for work. She really does. You can tell everyone you go to in the category to watch others. Yeah. <clears throat> so, yeah. Can I say something that's controversial yet brave? I'm tired of not safe for work VTubers complaining that they're being lewd 